Thank you for inviting the Department of Labor and Employment to share our insights and contribute to this year's DPRM. Indeed, COVID-19 has exacerbated socioeconomic disparities in the country, further heightening the need for policies with a strong regard for social justice in our recovery beyond the pandemic. The Department of Labor and Employment welcomes this opportunity to present our strategic priorities in the next six years as contribution to the administration's agenda towards economic recovery and poverty reduction. It is my privilege to share with you our insights on how employability and the promotion of local employment play key roles in the country's long-term recovery. The year 2020 has not been a very good year for the economy and the labor market. The International Labor Organization reports that in the Philippines, the pandemic brought about a spike in the unemployment rate, a fall in labor force participation rate, a significant reduction in work working hours, and a large swell in the fraction of workers employed but absent from work. Interruptions in economic activities saw us registering record highs and lows in our key employment indicators with employment rate reaching 89.6% and unemployment 10.3%. This is the lowest and highest, respectively, uh, since 2005. The ensuing scenario required the government to mobilize emergency response programs in order to curb the immediate devastating effects of the pandemic on the jobs market. By 2021, we were seeing clear signs of the economy's recovery as COVID-19 restrictions were eased and economic activities increased. These improvements were sustained into 2022 with employment rate up at 94% or 46.592 million persons in June 2022 and unemployment rate down to 6% or 2.99 million unemployed. Prompt swift action from the government and its social partners quickly reversed the catastrophic state our, con our country was in during the peak of the crisis. But despite such notable improvements, our economy is still far from its pre-pandemic potentials. Beyond just overturning setbacks in our key employment indicators, the country still needs to contend with long-term impacts of the pandemic. This requires a deep dive into labor market trends and recalibration of policies and strategies based on analysis of past, present, and future situations. In the last couple Recording in progress of the job disruptive impacts of the pandemic and digitalization. Additionally, experts predict that workplace disruptions will not slow down in the next two to three years as new COVID variants continue to emerge and cause workplaces to temporarily go remote on and off. This creates unevenness around where, when, and how much different employees are working. Pressing concerns include the challenges SMEs face in implementing hybrid work arrangement, which involve provision of facilities, equipment, and resources for workers to work remotely and effectively. An increase in employee turnover can also be observed as hybrid and remote work become the norm and competition between employers offering greater flexibility or benefits drive mass resignations. Automation is slowly replacing managerial tasks like performance feedback and monitoring, decreasing demand for these roles. Mental health concerns and re real wage cuts are also rising issues as the pandemic triggers stress and depression among workers and push inflation rates globally. Last July, the Dolly released a new issue of labor market trends, thriving in the era of digital transformation, which examines how the country is adapting to digital transformation, how we should prepare for the future labor market and what is being done to facilitate transition to the digital economy. The publication notes clear signs of the Philippine economy's integration of technology into business operations and the delivery of products and services. According to a survey commissioned by Epson in mid-2020, 55% of small and medium-sized enterprises are at the very early stages of digital transformation, with more than 8 out of 10 identifying digital te technology adoption as the way to improve business processes, especially customer experience. 
Alibaba Cloud reports that the majority or 94% of Philippine businesses view cloud-based technology solutions as an, as an important factor in mitigating the impact of the pandemic. At 88%, Philippine businesses were among the highest of the markets surveyed, stating they are now more supportive of using cloud-based technology solutions to grow their businesses as compared to before COVID-19. Additionally, data from the Banco Central ng Pilipinas revealed that electronic payment transactions coursed through the automated clearing houses of the National Retail Payments System rose to 444 billion as of September 2020. Payments made through PesoNet more than doubled with volumes surging by 264% year on year and value rising by 160% over the same period. The digital economy presents immense opportunities for the country. However, it is important to underscore that adoption of technology alone cannot fully harness the benefits of digital transformation. One of the most important aspects of digital transformation is the human element. Readying the workforce for digital transformation is investing in the future economic development. Going back to pre-pandemic discussions, numerous think tanks have come up with long lists of skills essential to workers in the shift to digital economy. These skills were aptly packaged by Forbes into three skill sets that empower workers to take on the jobs created or replaced in the process of digital transformation, human skills, business enabler skills, and digital building block skills. The daunting task of preparing the workforce to acquire these skills rests on individual undertakings of workers, employers, and the government. Equally important is joint tripartite action to set the environment for workforce development. To improve the employability of our workforce, the department tracks labor and skills supply and demand, anticipating the skills needs of rapidly developing and emerging industries. This is ultimately to align our modernized and responsive technical and vocational education and training strategy with arising trends and technology-driven transformations in the labor market. Upgraded skills standards, competency assessment, and certification benchmark against international standards through mutual recognition arrangements, mutual recognition of professional qualifications, and bilateral arrangements with our ASEAN neighbors and diplomatic allies enhances the global competitiveness of Filipino professionals. This allows them to move readily and easily between and across education, training, and employment sectors within their field. Continuing professional development towards own learning and growth also offers opportunities for non-formal education of professionals to be accumulated and transferred, allowing a professional to progress from one qualification to another and thus facilitating professional mobility and mutual recognition of professional qualifications. We need to invest in adults with high value skills, promoting professional growth and encouraging lifelong learning in the workplace. Targeted skills training and upgrading with a strong focus on digital fluency over just literacy counterbalances these irregularities arising from tech and pandemic-driven trends in the labor market. Dolly aims to craft a TVET strategy to be implemented by TESDA, tailored to the skills and competency requirements of the business. The strategy will be aligned with the use of new and emerging technologies to cope with the fast transformations in the world of work and cross the digital divide. Even before the pandemic, the young people have been at the forefront of calls for a long-term, longer-term perspective in terms of policy making and psychosocial protection. According to ILO, the COVID-19 crisis has resulted in multiple shocks that can disproportionately impact young people, including disruptions in education and training, employment and earnings, and increased job search constraints. Low paid and temporary employment in sectors most severely affected by the crisis are often held by young people who are now facing a higher risk of job and income loss. The Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development echoes the same concern, stating that the disruption in their access to, to education and employment opportunities as a result of economic downturn is likely to put the young generation on a much more volatile trajectory in finding and maintaining quality jobs and income. The department takes an active role in enhancing youth employability and implementing programs such as Special Program for Employment of Students, Government in Internship Program, Career Guidance Advocacy Program, and Job Start Philippines Program to keep youth in school, acquire necessary skills to boost their employability, and allow 
and allow their seamless transition from school to productive employment. These programs immerse students and their parents in the realities of the labor market, including the requirements of the new normal workplace. The ILO identifies skill development and lifelong learning as fundamental enablers of decent work, productivity, and sustainability. For individuals, they provide the key to pursue their interests and aspirations, access the labor market, escape from poverty and social ex exclusion, and adapt to the changing world of work. For enterprises, they provide a strategic competitive advantage for productivity and innovation. For societies, they create opportunities for economic transformation, job creation, inclusiveness, democracy, active citizenship, and sustainable growth. A new generation of skills and a lifelong learning ecosystem need to be jointly developed and implemented by the government and its social partners to ensure a just and inclusive transition to a future of work that contributes to social sustainable development and its economic, social, and environmental dimension. The pandemic marked a boom in the gig economy due to the world of work's shift to digital platforms and increased reliance on gig workers to home deliver necessities to consumers. Furthermore, the crisis has upended the traditional nine to five working world and caused many blue and white collar employees to pursue digital and gig work for additional or even primary income during these unprecedented times. The gig economy offers job flexibility that is more appealing and becoming more and more necessary to workers. In the Philippines, where the vast majority of workers are engaged in informal work, such platforms are regarded as a promising source of work opportunities. However, the opportunities are accompanied by some challenges. For workers, these relate in particular to reg regularity of work and income, working conditions, social protection, skill utilization, freedom of association, and the right to collective bargaining. Promoting a culture of compliance to labor laws, especially labor standards, will help create a stable, enabling environment that encourages the growth of the industry while ensuring just relations for workers and employers. Addressing bureaucratic inefficiencies, expanding digital infrastructure, leveraging technology and, technology, and increasing outreach of our programs and services to the poorest communities and vulnerable sectors will be contributive to the achievement of our shared vision of a flourishing digital economy. While climate change being, with climate change being one of the most pressing issues of our time, investing in green jobs is crucial to a fair and inclusive shift to a greener, more sustainable economy. This green economic shift requires alignment in education, skills development, and training with the labor requirements of the green and greener sectors. There is a challenge to strategize environmental education and skills development in anticipation of a paradigm shift in the industrial, agricultural, and services sectors, including the greening of communities that are vulnerable to climate change risks. This global health crisis has made even more apparent the importance and exigency of meaningful and consistent social dialogue in stimulating progress in the world of work and safeguarding it against unforeseeable disruptions. The Philippines has been a long-time champion of tripartism, but this was taken to a whole new level during the pandemic in response to the urgent need for a cohesive plan to revitalize the country's suffering labor market. To address pressing concerns of the most vulnerable and heavily hit segments of the market, the DOLE sought the active engagement of the labor and business sectors, as well as other civic groups in crafting a holistic recovery strategy. To ensure just and humane conditions of work, we adhere to labor and occupational safety and health standards and utilize to its full potential the regional minimum wage mechanisms. Promoting shared responsibility between workers and employers through tri tripartism and social dialogue maintains sound labor management relations and industrial peace. This approach ensures that rights at work are respected as the business sector generates more jobs with the full support of a unified government. Further, the DOLES intensified employment facilitation services through the public employment service offices at local government units enhance the access of job seekers to the labor market and allows employers in finding the right workers for their vacancies. Through our multi-platform employment facilitation, our clients may avail services such as job search and placement and employment, vocational and career counseling. Our partners at the local level implement the department's labor market programs that address perennial issues of skills mismatch and low labor and capital productivity by identifying skills shortages, connecting education to technical skills training, technical training to labor market entry, 
and labor market entry to the workplace. Overall, closer collaboration with our industry and social partners can help refocus and redirect our policies and programs with a social justice lens, ensuring just and inclusive transition. We are finalizing with the participation of our tripartite partners, the process of crafting a strategic national labor and employment plan that is action-oriented and results-driven that will be aligned with the ongoing development of the Philippine development plan for this administration. Finally, we will continue collaborating with our national and international development partners in creating more quality and green jobs and ensuring decent work for all with the ultimate goal of increasing worker productivity, improving living standards, and sustaining holistic social recovery post-pandemic and beyond. Maraming salamat at magandang umaga po sa ating lahat.